Alexandria, a small remote farming town that rests on the southern border of the nation of Gwenball. Well known as the home of the Willoughby Farms, a prime supplier of beef, grains, and winter vegetables. Just as renowned are the Auburn Hands, a family of halflings that owns one of the most respected cider mills in all of Gwynball. Our story begins one snowy winter evening, within the walls of the Winter Apple Tavern. An establishment owned by the Auburn Hands that has remained a popular place of residence for those passing through Alexandria. It's a busy night for the Winter Apple. The tables are filled with travelers, members of the various trade caravans, moving through town on their way to Brightwater. A party of trappers, men and women who protect Alexandria from the savage wilderness beyond. This, in addition to the usual clientele, workers from the Willoughby Farms, having dropped in for their supper, has left all but one of the tables available. Those that arrived late find themselves assigned to this table. These newcomers are perhaps the oddest of all of tonight's patrons. A dragonborn, red-scaled, wearing a set of winter clothing atop a suit of mail armor, a massive two-handed sword strapped to her back. A hill dwarf, bundled in similar clothing, a quarterstaff accommodating her person, a hardened look in her eyes. A halfling, flamboyantly dressed, a grin on his face, and a rapier at his side. A half-elf, a strange leather tome attached to one hip, a dagger to the other, an eye patch in the place of her right eye. Townsfolk and traveler alike leer at these strange folk, wondering what their business in town might be. Alexandria rarely attracts their likeness. One table in particular seems to take great notice of the newcomers. The trappers do not look pleased at the arrival of this strange party. Tonight, there may be trouble. Everybody, go ahead and describe your characters. Even if you don't play Dungeons & Dragons, you're probably still familiar with this setup. And if you do play Dungeons & Dragons, then you're definitely familiar with this setup. I'm Ryu, and today we're talking about taverns. What they are, why we start campaigns on them, and how they can be utilized throughout a campaign. Part 1. What are taverns, and why are they so popular? D&D, like other fantasy mediums, has changed in a lot of ways over the years. The game has become more streamlined, the player base has become more diverse, and there's been a greater focus on role-playing and world-building than in previous decades. But one aspect, or trope as some might say, has remained largely untouched. That trope being taverns and setting the beginning of campaigns in them. Let's start with the question, what is a tavern? Most of you probably already know the answer. A tavern is an establishment that serves food and drink. Simple enough concept. And in most games, the term tavern and inn are used interchangeably, so a tavern will also often rent out rooms to travelers. In a big town or city, taverns may also be hotspots where adventurers and mercenary types can scope out potential work by way of a job board in the back. So we now know what exactly a tavern is, but it still doesn't explain why it remains one of if not the most popular way to begin a D&D campaign. It's actually such a common way to kick off a game that, in some circles, it's considered uncreative. Lazy, even. I mean, why take the time to workshop a creative first meeting between the PCs when you can just throw them all in a tavern? The scenario practically writes itself. While I don't entirely agree with the idea of starting in a tavern to be bad, I can see why so many people feel that way. Because a lot of DMs do use it as a default due to how easy it is to set up. But, like any trope, I feel that the execution of the trope is more important than how common the trope actually is. If poorly utilized, it can come off as half-hearted and uninspired. But if used smartly, it can turn into a very memorable introduction to both your campaign and your world. Part 2. Why do we start campaigns in taverns? In addition to the previously listed reasons, I have my own theories as to why we love starting in taverns. For one thing, I think taverns are one of the quintessential fantasy locations, right up there alongside castles and dungeons. Taverns are one of the first things you think of when you think of D&D, or even just fantasy in general. There's something nostalgic about the idea of a big room full of cold ale, fresh cooked food, rowdy patrons, and a fierce fire burning in the hearth that has an almost hypnotic quality to us. It just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, regardless of how good or bad things may go in the first session of a campaign. You can probably think of a few famous fantasy taverns right now. There's the Green Dragon Inn from Lord of the Rings, the Inn at the Crossroads from A Song of Ice and Fire, or even the Three Broomsticks from Harry Potter. 
Also, as mentioned before, the terms tavern and inn are often used interchangeably in the context of D&D. So most taverns will rent out rooms to adventurers and travelers. This, coupled with the idea that taverns and big settlements will often be small hubs for adventuring work, means it's natural for adventurers, which is usually what the PCs are, to gravitate towards them. In summary, if you're a traveler in a foreign place who's hungry, tired, and in need of work, it makes sense that you'd look to taverns or other such establishments. Not to mention, if you aren't already acquainted with your fellow party members, this provides a great opportunity to gain some allies. After all, you probably don't want to take on a pack of dire wolves or a massive hydra without some form of backup. So we've talked about how this works for the benefit of the PCs, but how does it benefit the players themselves? And how do the players know what to do and how to do it? Well, a lot of that is going to depend on the Dungeon Master. We'll talk about scripting sequences and the benefits slash drawbacks of doing so in a future video, but as a DM, you have a lot of room to play around here. See, the PCs don't need to be the only important people in the tavern. As we've already covered, taverns can attract all sorts of interesting people. Maybe there are local soldiers, members of a guild, or even other adventurers. This provides an opportunity for the GM to sprinkle in information on the local area or future quests without the use of drive-by exposition. Look at the setup from the beginning of the video. The PC's current situation was described, along with details regarding the town, the locals, and the surrounding area. From this point, really anything goes. You can use any of the above reasons and more as a launching point for future events. Your players might be slow on the uptake. This is a new campaign with new characters after all. But they know why they sat down at the table. Give them some time to gel with their characters and give them a gentle push if you need to. What or who they choose to interact with will be fun to see. Part three, using taverns throughout a campaign. Now that we've covered starting in taverns, let's talk about how taverns can be utilized throughout a campaign. So, the party has completed their first adventure. They've left the starting town and are onto bigger pastures. Whatever settlement they visit, though, they're still going to need a place to stay. One way you can use taverns and world built at the same time is by having multiple tavern options in any one settlement. I mean, why would a big city only have one place for travelers to drink and sleep? One method I use is to pepper a settlement with a handful of taverns priced at different points on the meals and lodging table from the player's handbook. At the low end, you've got squalid taverns for the diviest of dive bars. Whereas at the high end, you have the aristocratic taverns where only the top of society can afford to stay. Both types can be utilized in different ways outside of just RP fluff. A low end tavern could be a great place to gather information about the gangs or other criminal groups within a settlement while a high-end tavern is a prime location to mingle with noblemen and learn about the politics of the upper echelons. Or you could just have a drinking contest. A lot of drinking contests. On that idea, though, sometimes players just want to roleplay their time hanging around a tavern. Going to a high-end tavern over a low-end one might not provide any mechanical benefits, though it certainly could if you feel like homebrewing, but it can still provide a plethora of entertaining scenarios. Chances are, unless your players are really mechanically driven and nothing else, they're probably going to spend gold on expensive food and drinks, even if they have no mechanical reason to do so. This is a role-playing game after all, why not role-play having fun with friends over food and drinks in a fun fantasy setting? We clearly enjoy doing it in the real world, and the real world doesn't have elves, dragons, and magic. And using the different price points for taverns can really help sell to the players that they're moving up in the world. When they were just level 1 adventurers, they had to pinch their coppers and stay where they could afford to. When they're level 10 adventurers, though, bring on the fancy wine and feather beds. They fought hard to get this wealthy, they've earned it. Taverns are fun. I think that's the point I've been trying to get across. They certainly aren't going away anytime soon. And depending on how they're utilized, they can make for some great memories between the players. They might talk about the fights that have broken out in specific taverns, or about their meetings with certain NPCs, or even their first meeting when they came together as a party. You could even pull a George R. R. Martin and go into extensive detail on the food served within a particular establishment. Be careful with that one, though. You might notice you've gone through more chips than usual at the end of the session. Coming up with tavern names can also be fun, and can tie into the lore of the settlement. There are plenty of random name generators out there for this sort of thing. Even if you don't use the names the generators give you, they can still provide good inspiration. Funny story about one of the campaigns I'm running currently. It started in the second town my players visited, but without realizing it, I kept giving taverns avian-themed names. There was the Tired owl bear, the Snowbird's Nest, the Canary's Nest, the Snowy Griffin, the Elated Hippogriff, yeah, the list goes on. 
Once my players realized this, they always gravitated towards the bird-themed tavern, regardless of the price. That's about all I have to say on taverns. They're a fun resource that can be utilized in a variety of ways, and they probably aren't going away anytime soon. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas as to how to use taverns in your own campaigns. If you still prefer to start your campaigns in a different matter, that's fine too. But hopefully this helped explain why this trope remains so popular. I checked the script and I realized I've said the word tavern nearly 75 times. I hope you all enjoyed my rambling on... you know what. I invested in an actual microphone, so hopefully I'm coming through a little clearer now. I hope to improve the overall video quality as I make more of them. As per usual, I publish things on the DMs Guild every now and again. They're pay what you want, so feel free to check them out if you're interested. Till next time.